Hi Greedy 3D, as you may recall the review I did of this, the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex 3D printer. It is a fantastic next generation printer. There can be no doubt about that. It's got a few flaws and issues. Watch my review and I'll talk to you through all of them. But the big one for me is that you can't use third party resin in it. I know, you've got a 3D printer that's not set up to use third party resins. It does give you its own resins in this unusually shaped bottle. And to be fair, this resin has given me some brilliant results. And the good thing about using their own resin is you literally just pop this into the machine. It recognizes what resin it is. You tell your slicer when you slice your, uh, your 3D print that you want to make, you've got to use their slicer, of course, because it doesn't support cheetah box or lychee or anything else. But their slicer will also be told what it's using and it will adapt the settings. It will adapt the lift distances. It will do all of its things to make your print perfect. And it is. I have to say the prints that I pulled out of it are perfect. So why wouldn't you use their standard resins? Well, I'll tell you why. One kilogram of this PAP10 resin, one kilogram is 74 pounds for one kilogram. Let me just let that sink in a little bit. One kilogram is 74 pounds. If you want to use their PAP10, which is their transparent resin, that's 90 odd quid per one kilogram. 90 odd quid one kilogram is a lot of money, isn't it? So you will want to, I am sure, if you are a regular 3D printer, you will want to use the cheaper resins on the market. You'll want to use your Jam Jays. You'll want to use your Sunloos, your Elecubics, your Elegoos, whatever you want to use. So today I'm going to take a couple of resins. I'm going to take Jam J and I'm going to take some Sunloo and I'm going to see if I can get this to print with them using its standard settings that it would use for this because I know resins are a little bit different, but resin is kind of resin. Don't shoot me for saying that, experts out there. You know, I know you can change the exposure times and all the other bits and pieces, but let's just see what kind of results I can get throwing a cheap resin in a really, really expensive printer. Stay tuned. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all the traces of that PAT 10 out of the resin tray from the Hay Gears printer. I'm using some IPA, just some standard 95% IPA in a squirty bottle and I'm using some kitchen roll just to clean it out thoroughly before I put the tray back in to the Hay Gears Ultra Craft Reflex printer. Pull the little handles down and that tray is ready to go. Next thing I'm going to do is just fit the little dam for the auto feed because don't forget we're going to be using their bottle to feed it in and I'm going to put the little resin sensor back in and we're ready to go. Now I'm going to take the whole lid off this original PAT 10 bottle. Now this is an empty bottle and I'm going to use some of this Jam J water washable high clear to fill in this PAT 10 bottle and I'm going to use it to auto feed in. So this is Jam J high clear water washable going in to the actual original Hay Gears bottle. Now I'm going into the slicer and I'm going to choose all the usual things and I'm going to tell it that I'm using PAT 10. It don't know that there's Jam J in there. It thinks that it's PAT 10 which is absolutely fine and I'm going to just find my file. I did this file for a Superman bust that I did in clear resin in one of my previous videos make sure you check it out and the slicer has moved it where it needs to go and done all its usual things and this if you can see the green stuff there that's the stuff that I'm going to be printing here and also both of his arms were printed in the clear stuff last time this is that Superman model I was talking to you about and as you can see the quality of the uh, Hay Gears resin is wonderful now I pressed print and straight away I've had a failure you may see this this is a known problem with the Hay Gears printer. You just need to warm it up with a hairdryer to get it ambient temperature above 15 and it will print. They are fixing this in an update, I am led to believe. Top right corner, you can see that the dam has opened and has released that uh, Jam J resin into the tray. Again, don't forget the printer thinks that this is its own PAT 10 resin that it's using and it's going to go down into the gloop and it's going to start the printing process. So all we've done is tricked the printer into thinking it's printed with high gears resin when in fact it's using Jam J. It still baffles me to think that Hay Gears have not opened this up to third party resins. Their slicer doesn't allow any settings to be changed in it and you have to choose their own resins and you can't use third party slicers like Chitu Box or Lychee. Just crazy. Anyway, it's printed and it's printed absolutely perfectly I think 
Looks good to me. Let's get it off the build plate and have a little look. I'm pulling it off and I can tell you that was no difference to the original ones that I printed off. They are solid. They are clear. They are not brittle. They look absolutely amazing. Now I'm using a hairdryer here just to loosen up a little bit of the supports. Again, I do this with all my models. This has got nothing to do with the experiments that we're doing today. And once the supports are a little bit looser, I can pull off some of the delicate models really, really easy. And they came off fine. I can say so far that I've noticed no difference using the Jam J High Clear water washable as opposed to the Hay Gears Pat 10. Everything is good. Everything is clear. Even the tiniest little parts have printed wonderfully and have come off the build plate. Fantastic. Be interesting to see what it's like getting the rest of the supports off. Well, they just scraped off exactly the same way as before. So I think it's a fair safe bet to say we are getting away with this. But this is just one print. I want to try something else to see how we go. So I'm going to clean the build plate up. I'm just using some IPA here, soaked cloths to clean it all up. And I I'm going to clean those parts as well in the uh, wash station. I'm setting it right down low to uh, eight minutes and down to 80 revolutions per minute to give the whole thing a clean. I think if you do it any faster than that, you are going to batter things silly. So they are having a real good clean now. So let's have a little look at what they've come out like. Well, there you go. I think you would agree with me to say that the quality of that is fine. There's no difference to normal. I'm happy with the quality. I can categorically say that is no different to what came out when I used the actual Pat 10 resin. I'm chuffed to bits. I think we've succeeded wonderfully. But as I say, that's just one model. I think it's fair to try something else. If I just take you back to the Hay Gears resin, this is what I printed previously. This is the Predator head from Wicked. Uh, and this again was printed in the Hay Gears Pat 10. And the quality of this resin, lovely, no problems, no issues. The only issue I do have is this is £94 for one kilogram. 94 quid that's a crazy crazy price for resin so let's print it again but this time yep you've guessed it we're going to be printing it again in jam j high clear water washable don't you think that's quite clever the way the build plate stirs the resin up to mix it up oh, i think that's clever um let's leave it to print and we will come back once it's all done and dusted so the resin we're using is Jam J Water Washable High Clear. And as you can see, the Alien has printed. The printer thinks it's printing with its Pat 10 resin. We've convinced it that we're using that, but it has printed this model and so far looks good. It's uh, I'm using that hairdryer to get the supports off as I normally do a gentle tap and it's off the build plate. And I am really happy with what I see. I've given it a cure for around about five minutes and well, just look at that. What can I say? There's a couple of supports left still to get off, so there's a little bit of tidying up to do, but it's printed. The, the printer has convinced itself that it's printed with its own 90-odd quid resin, when in fact it's printing with £25 Jam J. I am absolutely chuffed with that result. Perfect. No problems. I think we've solved that problem. So now we are going to move on to the next resin. But before I do that, I want to show you a little something. I want to make sure you understand that you can turn off the automatic fill. It's in the settings setting. Turn it off. And when you've turned it off, manually close the little resin gate. Because this time now, what we're going to do, we're just going to pour this Jam J Standard Pro resin in straight into the vat as we normally would with a resin printer that didn't have an auto feed. I'm just going to pour in this Jam J resin. So we've turned off the little dam and that allows us to bypass the auto feed system, which is what we want to do. I've gone into the printer settings. I've chosen regular tank and I'm going to choose miniature and I'm going to choose their PAP 10 resin and 50 microns. That's what I'm going to use for this particular resin. And for this uh, print, I'm going to use the Superman vs Zod model, which is a design by 3D Berserk. I've sliced it, I've cut it, I've had some supports, I've hollowed it and I've added some holes. And now I'm going to send it across to my uh, Ultracraft printer. And that will be thinking that it's printing with its PAP 10 when actually it's printed with Jam J. 
I did have a warning to tell me there's no resin bottle installed, and it also said I hadn't got enough resin, but hmm, yes, I had. If you're confident, you can just press ignore on both of those warnings. And look what I've got. I've got a Superman head, and closer inspection shows me that the detail of this is absolutely poific. It's looking fantastic. The hair's looking great. The finer points, all good. I'm happy that this Jam J resin is taking the place of the PAP-10 for a fraction of the cost, but let's put it under a little bit more pressure. Let's give it a bigger test. Let's print some more of the models from this Superman vs Zod. There's quite a few here. And a few hours later, after again those warnings about no resin in there and I've not got enough. And wow, there we go. Slight lifting off the plate, but you know, I'm not going to put that down to the resin because I think you get that in any resin on any printer. And the important thing is they have printed perfectly everything on there that i asked it to do it's done it's all come off wonderfully and the supports coming off as well was an absolute dream so as you can see once we've got everything cured and cleaned the jam j pro resin has done a marvelous job in producing this uh, superman model now it may look a bit tattered it is absolutely supposed to look like that superman's just been battered by Zod. Awesome, awesome details. Everything as I wanted it to be. So what can we draw a conclusion from from this? Well, we can't say that although Hay Gears does not support third party resins, you can actually use third party resins to make some fantastic results on this printer. In my review, there was a couple of reasons why I said I wouldn't buy this printer. One of them was because it didn't support third party resins. Now, I haven't really changed my stance in any of this, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But first, let's have a quick look at the most common printer resin that you get on the market, Sunlu Basic. And Sunlu Basic is the most common resin because it's usually the cheapest and the whole consumer market is driven by price and that is the point that I want to make here regarding the Hay Gears approach to the consumer world. They're overcharging in my opinion for their resins which are absolutely fantastic but I have gone on to prove here that you do not need to put those really expensive resins in your printer to get some fantastic results. So I do believe that the Hay Gear strategy is a little bit flawed. So just looking at the final product from Sun Lu again, and this may not surprise you to know that everything is printed wonderfully. The standard, the quality, it's beautiful. You can use Sun Lu Basic Grey in this printer, tricking it into using its PAP-10 resin. When I did my review, I said that I would not buy this resin printer and I said it for a number of reasons the build size plate the fact that it didn't support third-party resins the fact that it didn't support chitu box or light chi as a lot of people want to use and the fact that its own slicer does not allow you to change the settings that hasn't changed my opinion has not changed I still wouldn't buy the printer for that reason but I just hope Hay Gears are watching this because if you opened your slicer up to third-party resins if you allowed people to use things like Chitu Box and Lychee, you might just sell a few more printers because your printer is absolutely amazing. It is a brilliant machine. It's futuristic, state of the art. It produces some fantastic prints, but you really need to look at your pricing strategy, I believe. And also you need to look at opening it up to these cheaper third party resins. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today, Greedy 3 dears. I really do hope you've found it of use. I'd be really interested to know what your comments are about what you've seen today and your thoughts on Hay Gears and the Ultracraft Reflex. Don't forget, join our Patreon. All the details will be below. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. Make sure you have a look at the item description as well. And if you want to buy anything from it, you can get one of these Hay Gears from there if you really want to. It'll all be in there as an affiliate link. Hope you've enjoyed today, guys. Please, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time on Greedy3D. Mm -hmm.